Want a simple way to separate your subject from the background? Well, I'm going to show you two ways to do it in Lightroom Classic. And if you stick around, we'll edit the entire image together. So grab a cup of coffee, fire up Lightroom, and let's start editing. So here's my edited image minus the technique that I'm going to show you. So what we're going to do is create a brush. Now you can see I already have multiple masks on this image and I'm going to create a new brush, okay? Now I already have selected the subject, okay? So there's my subject selected. Now what I'm going to do with this brush, I'm going to adjust the feather. I'm gonna make the feather kind of big and I don't want the size of the brush to be too big. I think it's pretty good right there where it's at. So I'm just going to brush and I'm gonna have the intersecting point there on the brush right along the edge of the bear. Now I know that right now I am going into the background and that's completely okay. So I'm thinking about where the light is coming from though. The light is coming from over here. So I'm just kind of going across this portion here. I'm not gonna go down where I feel like the light probably wouldn't be hitting as much underneath the ear there. And I'm probably gonna put a little bit in here. Okay, so I've just kind of brushed in this area here. So now what we're gonna do is, we'll get rid of the show overlay so we don't need to see that anymore. And what we're gonna do is bump the shadows. Now I'm gonna take it way up and you see it's, and I could even take up the exposure. So you can see where I brushed and what I did and it definitely is getting the background. So while that's exposed and you can see that, we're going to go up here to our brush mask and we're going to hit subtract background. Okay, so now we're only on the subject. Now, obviously it's way too bright. So we're gonna take our exposure all the way down. And then we're just gonna bump this up a little bit. And what I like to do is turn the effect on and off by, or the mask on and off by hitting the eyeball. And that allows me to see the difference I make. Now we're not trying to make it too drastic. We're just trying to create a subtle separation between the background and our subject. Now I'm going to delete the mask that we just created and I'm going to show you a second way to do the same thing. So we're going to duplicate mask one. Mask one is our subject. And then we're going to come over here to mask one copy and I'm going to click the three dots and I'm gonna intersect the mask with a brush. So now Whenever we draw, just like we did before, it's the same exact thing. So we're just gonna draw across the edge of our subject. And you can see that now it just reveals the area minus the background. So again, we did intersect mask with brush. Okay, so now we can come down here again and we can just add our shadow boost the way that we want and there you have it so you can see just adding that small brush stroke really helps to separate the subject from the background now i will tell you this will not work in all scenarios but it doesn't only work with wildlife you can try this with a variety of subjects and you might really like the results so now let's start with our raw image and edit it from the ground up one of the first things that i like to do is select a color profile so we're going to come over here and select our profile browser and i like to do camera matching it's pulling it right from the camera and there's different options that we have and i think i'm going to begin with portrait. I like that as my starting point. Something that you might notice is the bear now looks really blue. So we're going to fix that. We're going to go down to our color mixer and under the mixer in saturation, we're going to just move the blue down. Now, actually, if I bump it all the way up, you can see how blue our bear actually is whenever that's where the blue colors are coming from. So I don't want that obviously here's the neutral point and we're going to bring it down a tad there 
Okay, so we're probably gonna have to go back and adjust that again. Let's go ahead and adjust our white balance. If we go to auto, it's going to give us what Adobe thinks is the proper exposure. I'm actually not a big fan of that, but sometimes I like to just see what these numbers are to see what Adobe thinks might be correct. And then I go back here to as shot, and I'll just kind of bump it up myself. And I wanna leave the tint where it's at. I kind of like that and then just bumping this up a bit. And I think that's pretty good right there. Let's go back down and it's just balancing things out. We're gonna take the blue back down a little bit and that's pretty good. Okay, next, what we're going to do is go to our detail. I really like the denoise feature inside Lightroom Classic. It's been updated recently. It's not making copies, it's rendering your raw file. And the results I think are looking fantastic. I don't see a need now to go outside to an external program. So we've got our image denoised now, and we're going to add a little bit of sharpening. Now this image is super sharp already. I'm not going to worry too much about sharpening here, but I am going to bump it up just a little bit because it is a raw file. And then let's zoom out, and we're gonna hold down Option or Alt, Option on the Mac, and I'm going to mask. So what this is doing is it's only going to sharpen the areas that are white. So you could do this just like this and you can't see what you're doing, but whenever you hold down Option or Alt on Windows, you're able to see what actually is going to be sharpened. And I think that's pretty good right there. So there we go. Okay, so let's go up here. Now we're gonna start working with Mass. I really like mass. They allow us to isolate just particular areas. So let's look at our bear. I really do feel like there's some brightness here that we probably need to get rid of a bit. Um, I'm going to start with our mask. We're going to make a subject mask and Lightroom Classic does a fantastic job of isolating our subject. And I think I am going to bump the shadows just a tad. We're gonna take the highlights down just a tad. Well, actually not just a tad, quite a bit actually. And that's looking pretty good. Now I still feel like this is a little bit bright right here, uh, especially around his nose. I think I'm losing a little bit of detail. So what I'm gonna do is add a radial gradient right there. And I'm just gonna draw it on here. This is pretty much where I want it to go staying just on the bear and you can see that my feather is all the way up so it's it's a very spread out gradient it's not going to be real noticeable that there's an edge at all and what we're going to do is take the highlights down just in that spot and if i hit the backslash button let's turn off these mass if i hit backslash this is what we came from this is where we're at right now so we've definitely added some detail there in that area and i think things are looking pretty good so next let's go over here and let's make our brush that's going to allow us to create some separation around our subject and our bear so we're going to draw i'm sorry our subject and our background so we're gonna draw this on. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I, again, am using somewhat of a, a big feather, and I might even feather that just a little bit more. And then we're gonna bump the shadows up. You can see what it's gonna do. So we're gonna bump the shadows up, but I don't want it to go too far. And now with our mask three, that's our drawing here, our separation drawing, we're going to subtract select background, and now if I turn on the show overlay, we're only affecting the bear, okay? So let's go up here, let's turn off the eyeball, and you can see the difference that that made. Just a very subtle difference, and I could even maybe exaggerate it just a little bit more. Maybe we'll take the exposure up just a tad. And now you can really see that difference that we've created here. I like that a lot. Okay, something is really, really bothering me though in this image. And that something is this tree over here. So we're going to remove it. I try to keep my images as natural as possible. And you have to make this determination for yourself. What are you comfortable removing or adding into your image? For me, branches and natural things that distract from the subject. Maybe it's a, a leaf that was on the bear or a piece of something. That can be distracting. And personally, I'm okay with getting rid of that. So we're going to get rid of the tree. So we're going to use the generative AI option. And 
again, I'm just so impressed with what Lightroom is able to do these days, Lightroom Classic. And what we're gonna do is just draw with a border around that tree. It's selected now, and I'm just gonna hit Subtract, Remove. And it's going to provide us with three options. I don't like that. I feel like it gave them a bit of a hump. Let's try the second one, a little bit better. Okay. I think that one is the one that I like the best. Okay, so we're gonna stick with that. And I will tell you that I always do this after denoise. I don't want to do this before I denoise because it has a tendency to maybe make things look a little bit strange. Next, we're going to create maybe a bit of a brighter look behind him. I think that's really gonna start to bring this image more to life. We're gonna select a linear gradient. I'm gonna make a linear gradient that kind of comes down all the way to here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we're going to subtract, select subject. Now, whenever I do that, the thing is, my tree is still selected. You can see it right there. So what we're gonna do is actually subtract, select object, and you know, I don't always have great luck with this. It usually leaves some remnants, but it's a good place to get started. And actually, look at that. It did a pretty good job this time. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Okay, so we're gonna leave that as it is. Looks pretty good. And now with this background selected, let's do this again. Subtract, select subject. It helps to get rid of some of this here that's still attached to the bear. And if you wanted to, things don't have to always be perfect, but we were paying attention to our edges. So I think I am going to just use my brush here and come in and just do a little tidying up. Just get those edges just a bit more. But I want to be careful I'm not going into the background. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to shut off the overlay there. And I think we're going to bump the exposure up a bit. Just on the background. I think we're going to make it a little bit warmer. And that's looking pretty good. Like that. And I think I'm going to add another mask. Not a linear gradient. We're going to do a radial gradient. And I'm going to make basically what is going to amount to a sun ray. So I'm going to stretch that out. And again, very subtle stuff. And we're going to angle it here onto the bear. Just a bit. I don't even want it to cover his eye. Okay, so I think that's pretty good right there. And again, we're going to bump the exposure up. This time we're going to go down here to dehaze. And we're going to add some haze. I think that's looking good. Let's make it a little bit warmer with the temperature. And I'm really liking that. And actually, you know, this is hitting the bear, but not very much, but I think I'm okay with that because I want the light to hit him and it is hitting the uh, texture on the tree as well. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. I think this looks pretty good. One final thing here with mass that we're going to do is just create uh, some detail in the eyes. And whoa, we're way too close. Let's back that up a little bit. So I've got a brush and we're gonna come up here to our presets and Adobe has Iris Enhance built in. We're gonna change the feather to really no feather at all. Paint those on and let's show our overlay so we can kind of see what we're doing. That looks good. Okay, so there we are. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of vibrance here then just a tad of saturation. And look at that. I think that's a fantastic edit. We've come from this to this and definitely added some vibrancy and life to the image. Do you have any coffee left? I have just a sip, so it's time for a refill. I hope you enjoyed this tip that will really help to get your images popping off the screen, separating your subject from the background. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you found it helpful. I'll see you in the next video with a fresh cup of coffee.